Um, hi everyone. Uh, my name is Ati. I am a second PhD student from Shaz, a school of sport, health, and applied so applied science. Uh, I'm going today. I'm going to tell you a little bit about my PhD research, which is all about boobs. <laughs> so <laughs> I'm used to talking about boobs all the time, obviously because of my PhD research, <laughs> not any other reasons. <laughs> so, uh, but to press the arc here, I'm representing you with uh, some names of boobs. There are so many names we are using to call our breast, and there are some of them. So hopefully, it will break the ice and we will having a wonderful presentation together. <laughs> um, here I'm presenting you with a side view of inside of one of female breasts. Don't be amazed when I'm showing you all these photos. I'm going to tell you all about it later. Uh, here I'm going to tell you a little bit about breast anatomy. But before uh, I start it, I have a question for you. Do you think uh, there is any muscle inside of the female breast? Yeah? Um, okay, uh, good try, but unfortunately, <laughs> unfortunately, it's not the right answer. Uh, this muscle, which is called pectoralis muscle, actually sits underneath of female breast. It means there is no muscle support inside female breast. Female breasts are mostly made of fat and glandular tissue, which have the job of producing milk and send it to the surface, milk ducts. And the only supportive structure inside the breast are skin and cooper ligaments. Uh, these blue lines, if I want to describe the thickness of these lines, they are like a thickness of a piece of paper or hair lot. Uh, so they cannot provide a very uh, strong supportive uh, structure for the breast. It means when we move, our breasts move, and we call it breast bounce. So here I've got a very interesting activity for you. I've made uh, three flower bags, and each of them represent a specific cup size, like A, B, C, D, double D. So I'm showing you these three, and I would like you to guess the cup size of each of them. <laughs> <laughs> so, and I'll give you a clue, i tell you the weight. So this one is the smallest one, its weight is 230 grams. So can you guess the cup size of this one? Sorry? A? Any? Yeah, actually, yeah, well done. <laughs> That's a B cup. So what about this very heavy one, it's like 800 grams. No. Is there a bigger one? No. <laughs> Any other? <laughs> Sorry? You said F? Yeah. Well, someone said F or <laughs> head. <laughs> so, F. So, what about this uh, medium one, which is like 460 grams? No. D. Double D? I know, it's D. So, well done. Very good. So, here. I've got uh, one of my tights. It's only for practice and presentation purposes. I've never <laughs> worn that. So <laughs> it's very clean. So to show you, uh, to show you how this uh, Cooper ligaments and skin providing support inside of the breast, imagine that the end of this tight is uh, representing skin and ligaments I told you about. So I am going to put this B carb in there. As you can see, the, you can see the S stretch, and when I bounce in the round, you can see the breast bounce, and it really happens for females. So, in another leg, I am going to put this D cup. <laughs> so, obviously, the bounce and the stretch is greater. So, we have uh, it's not like, I mean, as you can see, we have breast bounce and stretching even in a small cup size like B. But obviously, the larger the breast, uh, the breast size and the cup size, the greater the stretch and breast bounce. So, um, I told you all about the breast anatomy, breast bounce, so you may wonder, okay, what's the big deal about it, breast bounces, but actually, uh, there is a lot of problems associated with breast bounce that our general female population experience. There are some common problems for uh, women in relation to breast bounce. For example, 
up to two thirds of females experience exercise related breast pain, uh, mostly because of breast bounce. Also, breast bounce can lead to breast sac uh, without appropriate breast support because of uh, stretching all the ligaments I told you about. Uh, a lot of women uh, are embarrassed about breast bounce and breast <laughs> movement. And sadly, some women uh, stop playing a sport because of their breasts. Actually, our research shows that the breast in adult female population, the breast is the fourth largest barrier to exercise. So all of the problem I told you, like general female population, mostly adult females, but we've recently, our research group recently investigated all of these pro pr problems, specifically in adolescent girls population. So. Uh, and uh, we surveyed more than 2,000 school girls. It was a very big uh, study. But sadly, the results were not very uh, happy. They were kind of boring. Adolescent girls have so many breast concerns. Some of these concerns are not related to a sport. For example, they are so worried about breast cancer and how to check themselves for sign of breast cancer. But some of these concerns are related to a sport. For example, the biggest concern they have in relation to a sport is breast bounds, is breast pain. And uh, they are so worried about breast sac. They are embarrassed about breast bounds. Not only breast bounds, they are embarrassed about size and shape of uh, their breasts, um, the way their breasts look, or the boys' view of their breasts, and even getting change in front of the boys. And sadly, the negative effect of the breast on a sport participation in adolescent girls are significantly more uh, greater compared to adult females. Half of our participants said their breasts had an effect on their sport participation. So we know all of this concern, they are so boring. And as I told you, one of the common problems and the biggest concern in both adult and uh, adolescent population is breast bounce. But I have some good news for you. The good news is that we know the solution. For example, to reduce breast bounce and all the problems associated with breast bounce, an appropriate breast support can really help not to only reduce breast bounce, to reduce breast pain, breast sagging, embarrassment. So here I'm going to show you two videos. They are from our research group. So we have a female participant here uh, running in an everyday bra. As you can see, the breast is bouncing up and down, side to side, backward and forward. And I have a question again. Do you think how much breast bounces in an everyday bra when running? Just an average and tell me in centimeters, please. Just a number? Three. Three centimeters. No, actually the average is much more than that. Um, not 20, it's between 10 and 20, 15 centimeter. Um, but here, I'm going to show you a video of our female participant running in an appropriate breast support, which is like a sports bra. Obviously, you can see the movement is less, is significantly less, and I'm sure this female participant is less, uh, less uncomfortable and she doesn't have a lot of breast pain and any of the problems associated with breast pain. So uh, I told you about all of the concern, all of the problems, but as a research group, we, we've come up with an idea. So we have developed a breast education program to teach girls from a young age about breast, breast health, and appropriate breast support. By doing so, our main goal is to improve girls' knowledge of breast and breast health, and hopefully we can help them to be more physically active by eliminating the breast as a barrier to sport participation and improving their, increasing their enjoyment of sport and hopefully improve their body image satisfaction in relation to their breasts and how their breasts look. Um, here I've got some very interesting example of our ed breast educational resources that we have developed so far. We have also developed a personal stories audio and uh, profit video targeting young girls. As you can see, we are going to cover different topics, such as sport bra, breast uh, pain, uh, bra fitting. But as I told you, some girls are really concerned about breast cancer and how to check themselves for sign of breast cancer. So we are also going to teach them about breast cancer, how to be breast aware, like uh, to know their breast, what is 
normal for them, how their breasts look and feel normally. So hopefully they can detect any abnormal changes as soon as possible and report it to an appropriate person, like their parents, teacher or doctor. So I told you uh, my research is all about boobs. I am also developing a survey about boobs. So <laughs> uh, I told you about our education, breast education program. So it's very important for us to evaluate this breast education program to make sure it is working, it can be successful, and it's really achieving its aim. So we need an evaluation tool. We need a breast knowledge survey to evaluate breast knowledge of girls before and after our, evalu our um, program breast education program. So I have developed a breast knowledge survey. It's been a very lengthy process, to be honest. One year and a half so far. I don't recommend it to anyone. It's very <laughs> difficult. <laughs> so uh, for example, for my survey, I have already consulted with 15 breast health experts to make sure my survey measures what it's supposed to. Uh, I have done a focus group study with seven school girls to make sure they can understand my survey and it's suitable for their leave, uh, reading level. So far, around 1,000 of school girls have completed my survey, so I can check whether it's reliable, valid, and it really measures what is intended to. Um, thank you so much for listening. It's been a pleasure to share my research with you. Uh, I'm more than happy to answer any questions you've got.